The claim is made that what we think is fine-tuning is really not so, because what we are doing is looking at individual variables and seeing how they might, um, might move and what the implications for life would be. But two charges against that. One, if we vary multiple variables, each one differently, we might be able to generate the same kind of life we have here. So we have great variation. Second charge is that we are only defining life as we know it. And other kinds of, of uh, combinations of variables might generate all sorts of different kind of life. I think we've got to be careful when we use the word fine-tuning. And certainly, there have been some very loose statements about it. For instance, people have said that gravity is fine-tuned. All we need with respect to gravity is that it should be very weak indeed compared to the microphysical forces. So there's a huge range of scales between the micro world and scales where gravity is important. Many, many powers of 10 between cosmos and micro world. But I think there are two issues. One is um, we shouldn't be anthropocentric and just say we're interested in the kind of worlds in which we could exist. But we can ask the question, what are the requirements for a sort of complex cosmos? Mm -hmm. And you can certainly think of possible worlds where there could not be any kind of complexity. For instance, if there was just radiation and no atoms, if there was no gravity, if there was only two dimensions, if the universe always stayed in thermal equilibrium and recollapsed after a short time. There are lots and lots of possible universes that would clearly be stillborn and wouldn't allow any kind of complexity. Certainly. And I think uh, you can say there's a lot of parameter space that doesn't allow any kind of complexity. Now, the other thing you can do is imagine just varying one number and seeing uh, what is the range of variability which allows complexity. For instance, if you compare the uh, nuclear force and the um, uh, electromagnetic force in nuclei, you can ask what is the range that allows a periodic table. And you can do this for other laws. You can ask what's the uh, proportion of dark matter compared to atoms that would allow galaxies to form, etc. But, of course, we do these just in counterfactual universes. And what we'd really like to have is a theory which tells us that in some ensemble of universes or spaces, there is some range of these numbers, mm -hmm. and there may be correlations between them. And we're very, very far from ever having some theory like that. But as regards varying more than one parameter, you can certainly do an exercise in, say, two parameters. You can uh, imagine plotting a diagram yes. of two, yes. and you can ask in what area yes. of that two-dimensional uh, space there could be complexity. And you sometimes find there are two uh, separate domains. I mean, for instance, uh, if we ask um, under what conditions you can get a periodic table, uh, there is a domain where we get it as it happens in our universe through stars, but there may be another quite different domain where the heavy elements are made in the early Big Bang. So there are separate alternatives. Yes. But I think almost all assumptions would lead to the volume of the multi-parameter space that allows complexity being a small proportion of the total. So there is some sense in which we are in a privileged subset of all possible universes. But to quantify that requires a much better theory than we certainly have, and also to understand which are the parameters that vary between one Big Bang and the next, and also what the probability distribution is. In fact, I've uh, written papers on um, the cosmological constant and the fluctuation amplitude in the universe, because um, the um, cosmological repulsion, of course, is a, a, a force which works against gravity, and it's widely known that if the cosmic repulsion were greater, then uh, <laughs> galaxies were never formed. But there's another parameter, which is the fluctuation amplitude in the early universe, how rough the early universe was. And if the uh, fluctuations were 10 times bigger, mm. if the number describing those fluctuations were 10 to the minus 4, not 10 to the minus 5, then galaxies would still form even if the cosmological constant was 1,000 times higher. Mm. So that's an example where you can plot out a two-dimensional space of those two parameters. And one would like to extend this. And that's the kind of uh, exercise which I think is worth doing, even at present, just to map out the 
volumes of parameter space that would allow complexity. But what we really need, and what is further in the future, is some theory which says, do these parameters vary between one cosmos and the other, and what is the probability of them having different values? It would seem that this analysis degrades somewhat the initial, shall we say, exuberance over the fine-tuning argument that our universe is so unique because of the very tight range of all the parameters that we find. Well, we can't be sure, because uh, if we have to be in a uh, uh, particular patch of a multidimensional space, then that may be a smaller <laughs> portion. So we don't know which way it will go. Um, but certainly, um, we are very far from having a uh, theory to say just how special our universe is. It certainly is special in a sense, but to quantify that requires a lot more physics than we now have and will be dependent on the details of that physics.